Hey everybody. Uh, tonight I'm going to do a video about the nitrogen cycle. And I've done them before and I've basically done them just sort of explaining uh, how the whole process works. And it's a fairly straightforward process. I will get into that uh, at some point. But this video is going to be a little more in depth, a little more about uh, how to speed up a new tank. This tank is only about, I don't know, two weeks old and I've already got it fully stocked. I am still having uh, minor issues with it. I still am getting a little bit of ammonia showing up in it. Uh, and that's kind of the point I want to make. I really do want to talk about this whole idea of instantly cycling a tank in. Um, in my opinion, in my experience, the instant, you know, like done, you can walk away and not worry about it, doesn't exist. You know, you can really, really speed the process up, and I'm going to tell you how. Uh, and I'm also going to tell you how to do it very safely uh, and correctly. So let's not put the uh, cart ahead of the horse. Let's start with talking about what the nitrogen cycle actually is. I know a lot of you already know this. It's kind of uh, basic fish keeping stuff. But for those of you who don't, there is ammonia being produced in your tank. Your fish produce it. It's in the fish waste. It's just a natural byproduct of decomposition as the vegetable material, the uneaten fish food, uh, the fish waste, etc. Uh, decomposes and breaks down and produces ammonia. So there are two different species of bacteria in your tank that actually um, are a type of bacteria known as an autotrophic bacteria. And autotrophic means that it is a bacteria that does not rely on light uh, or photosynthesis for its energy. It relies on chemicals or chemosynthesis for its energy and it relies on inorganics. Uh, the chief source of food for the first bacterium is ammonia and it takes this ammonia and it breaks it down and it uses it for food and it produces a waste product called a nitrite. And that night that waste product is eaten by another species of bacteria that again <clears throat> excuse me uh, does not require light and that's important that's why this stuff can live in your dark filter box on the on the biomedia it does not need light it needs ammonia it needs the, the these inorganics to live so the second bacteria breaks down the nitrite and its waste product is now the organic compound of nitrate and that in a nutshell is is your entire that's it that's that's as simple as it is it's not a very complicated process at all and I hope as I go into talking much more detailed about stuff that I'm not going to make it sound a lot more complicated than it is uh, if you're a beginner and you're just kind of learning about the nitrogen cycle this probably isn't the video for you um, this is going to talk about how to really speed that process up if you're in a hurry to get fish in a tank and you want to do it safely uh, I also want to make sure at the other end of this video that you think about the bacteria in your tank properly. And if you don't think about the bacteria in your tank with every bit of love, care, and importance as you think about the fish in your tank, then you're not thinking about them properly. You have to think about this bacteria as though it is a member of your community because it is. It is the most important member of your community. You can lose a fish. Uh, you lose your nitrogen cycle bacteria and you've lost your tank. Your entire tank will crash. Um, <clears throat> so this is important stuff to understand. So the bacteria itself lives on surface material. It lives on surface area. That, that's important too. I've heard a lot of people talk about the way to speed up the cycle in a new tank is by pouring tank water from an old tank or an established tank into your new tank. Don't do this. Don't waste your time. All you're doing is pouring dirty water into a brand new tank. It's already full of nitrates. It's already full of the end result of the nitrogen cycle. That's, you're wasting your time. Don't bother doing it. What you do is you take some of the bio material out of your, let's say you've got a hang on the back filter. Uh, every now and again, as you know, you got to get in there and that sponge gets all gunked up and you got to sort of gently swab it out a little bit. You don't want to rinse it because you still need to leave those cultures in there, but you need to break the stuff loose enough that water will still flow through there because that's important too. <coughs> Excuse me. So, 
that's basically what you're going to do, except you're going to do it in a little pitcher of water, and then you're going to take that scummy, filthy, nasty, disgusting water, and you're going to pour that into your new tank. And you are pouring billions of bacteria into the water column. Now, that does not instantly cycle your tank in. I've done this many, many times, and I have many, many times, every time, found out that that is not a one and done, you can walk away, process over, your tank is cycled in uh, event. It, does, just, it doesn't work that way. Um, that bacteria swirls around. Some of it just stays in the water column until it eventually dies. Uh, some of it finds places to land and live, and it's a good start. You're really putting a lot in there. Uh, if you can pour it directly into your filter box and really kind of spike it right onto your uh, media, that's better if you can do that. Uh, what I did with this tank is I have the big uh, 204 or 304B uh, canister that everybody has, and it's got the four trays in it. Now I only have one tray set up for actual physical filtration because the, the your your filter, a lot of people think your filter is really for uh, removing the physical stuff out of your tank and keeping the water all sparkling clean and it's not really the the, the chief function of your filter is to move water across biomedia. Um, the bacteria that lives on surface material cannot go find food. You have to take food to it. The food lives in the water column in the form of back of. Um, ammonia in the water. You have to move that ammonia rich water across this surface area that has this um, bacteria living on it uh, to basically take food to it. Think about a filter feeder that lives in the ocean and it can't move. It has to rely on the currents to bring food to it. This is exactly the same way uh, and you have to think about it the exact same way. So if your filter is getting clogged up, you're not getting decent water flow, Think about that. You're not getting decent water flow to all of the colonies of bacteria that deal with the ammonia that's in your tank. That's very, very important. You have to think about them as a member of your tank. And you wouldn't, you know, if your fish were in a corner somewhere and for some reason not much food was getting to them, you would do, you would make adjustments. You would, you would figure out why food or, or whatever. You would make sure that that wasn't the case because you wouldn't want to see your fish starving. Believe me, you really don't want to see your nitrifying bacteria starving because if they die off, bad, bad things can happen in your tank really, really quickly. Um, we can get into all sorts of little weird things that can throw your cycle way out of balance, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves again because I tend to do that. Um, <clears throat> So with this stuff living on surface area and not in the water column, it's important that you allow it time to grow and develop and build into its proper numbers. So no matter how much you pour in there, it's either too much or too little or whatever, but it's not going to be the perfect amount that's going to be nice and balanced for the tank. Uh, you also, when I say surface area, it doesn't just live on the surface area of your filter media. It lives on the surface area everywhere in your tank. It lives on your glass, it lives on your rocks, it lives on the wood, and it lives on every little piece of substrate. And in this case, I have substrate that is designed to be very porous, and it holds multiple types of bacteria that actually uh, help break down fish waste and present, you know, prevent eutrophication, uh, which is an extreme buildup of uh, nitrates. Uh, so I got a lot of other stuff going on in my substrate there, but in any kind of substrate, even if you just have like the river gravel, um, every little bit of surface area contains this nitrifying bacteria. So you have to get to a balance where the amount of ammonia being produced in the tank is being eaten by the amount of bacteria that's in the tank. If you have too much bacteria, not enough ammonia, you're going to have a lot of bacteria dying off and vice versa. If you've got too much ammonia and not enough bacteria, the ammonia is not going to get dealt with and it's going to, you know, build up in the tank. Now, when you're cycling a tank in, that is something that has to happen. If you want the volume of your bacterial colonies to increase, you have to have food for them to eat and you have to have excess food for them to grow. Think about it like an animal, you know, you can't increase the size of the herd on the existing amount of food. You want more animals, gotta bring more food in. So you have to allow 
ammonia levels to build up in the tank. The excess ammonia allows for the bacteria to say, hey, there's extra food, and then it starts multiplying. It takes time for this process to happen. So I've essentially got to let fish swim around in water that has ammonia in it. So the way I do it is, first of all, after every water change like this I do, I dump more bacteria into the water. So, I, you know, and I'm in a situation where I have a lot of different fish tanks, so I can do this. I understand not everybody can do that. Um, again, this isn't for your beginner type, you know, just learning about the nitrogen cycle um, type person. So I can go to these fish tanks around my house and I can make myself a little batch of this scummy water from those filters. And when I fill this tank back up, um, I pour it right back in and I let it all happen again. If you have a UV filter or UV light on your filter, turn it off. You, you'll just kill the bacteria before it ever gets to... It has to go through the biomaterial in order to get stuck on the biomaterial and, and latch on and find a place to live and start growing. If you kill it before it gets there, you'll never get ahead of yourself. You'll basically be doing your natural six-week cycle. If you're spiking it, you got to let that bacteria live. you got to let bacterial colonies and cultures build up in your tank. I've been dealing with cloudy water. Um, I'm finally getting the cloudy water to go away because I'm right on the cusp of being done. I'm hoping this will be the last water change I have to do in order to um, be finally finished with my cycle and have it done. The reason I know I'm getting very close is because I'm now starting to get very, very small amounts of nitrites showing up in the water and I was not yesterday. I've also been monitoring the nitrite and ammonia levels every 12 hours since I set this tank up and I've been doing these massive 50% water changes on it every single day since I've set this tank up because within a 24 hour period I'm getting back up to about half a part per million and that is my limit and that was my point. Um, you, you have to let some build up in there. I will let it get up to 0.25 you know I will let it get up to where it's just making that first change in the color spectrum and as much as I hate to do it, you just, you've got to do it. You've got to have excess ammonia in the tank if you want those colonies to build. So 0.25 parts per million is, you know, it is ammonia. It is in the tank. It's not good for your tank, but I have a fairly low pH, and that means that a lot of that ammonia might even not be ammonia, but ammonium. If you've got a very hard water tank or like 8.2 pH or something, it's ammonia. Um... <clears throat> If you've got an acidic tank, a soft water tank, it's ammonium. Um, if you're right around that neutral, you, you're you know you're looking at it. anyway. I'm I'm don't want to get off on a stupid tangent talking about the you know splitting hairs here. Um, ammonia, ammonium doesn't matter. If you've got it in your tank, you don't want it there. So when I get above part you know 0.25, time to do a water change. That's my limit. As as soon as I'm getting up to that half a part per million, I do my big water change. So so far. I have been achieving that half a part per million in about a day. Uh, on a side note, as a little teaser, I also have figured out why my water system was not pulling nitrates out and I was getting the same amount in my source water as I was in my tap water. So video on that is going to be coming up real soon. The water guys are coming tomorrow. So I'm going to have a nice long talk with those guys and I'm going to put all that together into a video about what's going on with my water system and how all my water system works, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, so in this tank at 0.5 parts per million, this has been going on for about five days now. Now, one thing that is very important to know, and the more you know, the better off you are, is every time your bacteria multiply, they multiply like all single cell organisms, which is by division, and that means they double in numbers. So if you're letting the, t the tank cycle naturally, or if you're spiking it, either way, the process starts out slower and increases in speed every time you get a division because it's doubling in numbers. And obviously as that number begins to grow, it begins to grow very rapidly. So if I'm to the point where I'm getting this very, very slow increase in ammonia and this very slight a bit of nitrite, that lets me know that I've almost got enough nitrifying bacteria to deal with what's there. It's not quite enough to deal with it, but it will be probably very soon because 
every 36 hours or so it divides and that's important uh, other types of bacteria divide much much more quickly and you can actually run into issues in your tank with bacterial blooms that you can't get on top of I used to do water change after water change and within hours it was clouding up again and that's because the type of bacteria that was in my tank was dividing every 20 minutes uh, the bacteria that you want in your tank, this nitrifying bacteria I'm talking about, divides every 36 hours approximately, depending on temperature, pH, etc. Um, optimally, it divides every 36 hours. So if I'm down to where I'm just getting this little creep of ammonia over the course of a day, and I'm almost there on my numbers of bacterial colonies, one more division really ought to just double the numbers and I should just really be good and you know golden here in another day or so. So hopefully this will be my last big water change and then after that everything will be just smooth sailing and the tank will be fully cycled in. I won't be getting any more cloudy water uh, and I won't have to be doing these massive water changes and we can get on with just daily running with this tank. So I hope that didn't make the nitrogen cycle sound a lot more complicated and convoluted than it really is. It really does just boil down to ammonia gets produced, bacteria eats that, uh, its waste product is nitrite, it, you know, another one eats that, its waste product is nitrate, boom, done, there's your cycle. Um, I hope you walked away with this with a more thorough understanding of the life cycle of the actual bacteria that we're talking about. I know a lot of people talk about the bacteria being in there, but do you really understand this bacteria and what its needs are and that sort of thing? Because if you don't, look into it further. You know, I'm not necessarily here to tell you all the ins and outs of how all this stuff works. That's why it's not necessarily a how-to playlist. But it's enough to point you in the right direction and give you some information and go, okay, well, I never thought about it like that before. That's interesting. Maybe I should look into this more thoroughly or not. If you, if you go, okay, I understand it thoroughly enough and I don't need to know all this stuff, then that's fine too. You know, but for those of you that want to know, um, you know, there's, there's some food for thought. There's something to think about. If you want to take your tanks to the next level, it's always good to understand what's going on in your tanks. So I'm sorry, I had to fade the video out there. I had to cut filming. I had a little bit of a coffin fit. So there you go. There's some food for thought, as I was saying. And all I was going to do was wrap up by thanking you for watching. I uh, hope this was helpful. Please leave any comments, questions. Uh, I welcome all viewers. Please like, please sub, and I will see you real soon. Thanks again for watching.